You want to see some good activities you could do with the kids during quarantine? In this video, I'm going to show you what activities you could do to keep the kids busy and keep your sanity in check. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. For anyone who's new to my channel, I create life hacks to make life easier for you moms out there so you can free up time to do more fun things like self-care. For anyone who's new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button below and hit the notification bell so you're always notified every time I come out with a new video every Tuesday. Now in this video, I want to talk to you about, you know, we've all been at home with the kids in quarantine which is good because you want them to be safe. You don't want them to be in a school or out if it's not safe. So in that sense, it's good, but it's just been driving me bananas. Like I'm definitely not enjoying myself. What I've been doing is I've been doing a lot of self-care just to try to take out a few minutes for myself a day so I don't totally lose my mind. But I wanted to talk to you guys about what activities you could do educational-wise and just generally so that you can keep some sanity in the house and keep the kids involved and still connect with them because it's really important to connect with the kids in this time and spend time with them. My son is always like, if I don't do Legos with him or something, he'll be like, you don't like to spend time with me anymore. And I feel so bad because I'm just moody all the time, irritated all the time. So I don't feel like spending time with anybody. You know, it's not, it's not just the kids, even, you know, just anybody. It's like I'm just moody all the time, and I think a lot of us are feeling that way because it's such an uncertain time. Summertime is coming around. You want to take the kids to an amusement park or take them to the park in general, take them swimming. It's like things like that. It just feels so restrictive, you know. So what I'm thinking I may do is get, like, a playground set in the backyard or something so the kids can at least enjoy the summer at least playing in the backyard in a playground set or something like that. But anyway, let me go through a list of things. First, I'm going to go through just some general activities that you could do, and then I'm going to give you some specific websites that you can look at to keep your educational aspect going for your kids because you don't want them watching TV all day. So the first thing is I end up getting some chocolate cake mix, like Duncan Hines mix, because my son really likes it when we bake together. So that's like a something, just pick something fun that your kids like to do, like in the, in the kitchen, like baking wise, or just do something fun. Even if you're cooking, just get them involved. Just show them, hey, look what I'm cooking. And it just makes them feel good that you're including them in what you're doing. But if you could go do some baking or something with your kids, they would just really have fun with that. You would have fun with that. And you know, it just takes some of a load off. Another thing you could do, uh, my kids are still really little, but if your kids are old enough, you could do board games, you know, and sometimes that's a challenge because you have to finish all the chores in your house, everything that you have to do, your schoolwork, everything, your work. If you're working at home, then that's a big deal because you have to finish that too. So there's very little time to do anything. But if you can squeeze in some board games, then it would be nice for the family to spend time together and you just have fun. Another thing that I know, like I've been doing more frequently now, but before I was kind of having a hard time with it, is reading books at night, like before the kids go to sleep. Just read one or two, whatever you can do that makes it easy on you. Just read one or two good books and at least you'll get some reading in. You spend time together, you connect, and you can have a conversation before they go to sleep. Then another thing that's good and it will take some of the load off of you is have the kids help with your house chores. Like have the kids help unload the dishwasher. My son likes to help me fold laundry and put it away. And he like gets really excited about it. And it's good for me because I'm really bad about that. I always have laundry just sitting there. So, or when I'm ironing, he just chit chats with me while I'm ironing. So it's like just some ideas of you can do your house chores but you can still spend time with the kids at the same time, if they're mature enough for that. For now, for my daughter, it's a little bit hard because she's very hyper and she always has her hands all over the place and I would just have, I would just be scared to have her around the iron. So just think about the child's personality too when you do that type of thing. But I wanted to actually talk to you also about activities that you can do educational wise, you know, to keep them busy and keep them learning. You want them to learn, you know, this is a hard time, but it doesn't mean that anybody should stop learning aside from you know the school things that they're doing especially over the summer you may want to keep you know doing some things with them 
So what I did is I put my kids in ABC Mouse. Now that's a paid thing. It's like I paid $60 for one year. I kind of got a little ripped off because my sister pays $40 for a year. I don't really know what happened there. There may have been an upsell that I accidentally signed up for, which I am always guilty of doing stuff like that. I'm that gullible person that will end up, you know, buying something extra that I didn't really realize that I bought or just kind of bought it without thinking and it's, oops, I just spent like an extra 20 bucks for something that I really didn't need or anything. Yeah, so I am definitely guilty of being that person that is always easily, you know, down for an upsell. So ABC Mouse, it's really good because my uh, daughter's learning her alphabets that way. She, I just not had time to sit with her and do her ABCs. With my son, I was really good because he was like, you know, the firstborn. I had a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with him and a little bit, it was a little bit easier. But with her, I really don't get to sit down and really teach her her letters or anything for that matter. So this has been good. It's like a fun way to learn the ABCs. So that's mainly what I've been doing with her and zoo animals. She's been learning zoo animals. There's a little bit of science, but just whatever she can do, I've been doing that with her. My son, uh, he has a lot of homework as it is, so I've not had him start on his part yet, but I will probably more in the summer, you know, because then he'll have a little more free time. So another thing that I signed up my son Ayan for, he's six years old, um, I put him in Arabic class. It's called, this website is called Studio Arabia. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that properly. Or Studio, Studio Arabia, I don't know how to pronounce it. But StudioArabia.com. But anyway, that's what I signed him up for. It's like I do Mondays and Wednesdays. It's only a half an hour class, so it's not too bad. It's just that it becomes challenging when I'm already homeschooling the kids. That's the thing. He doesn't have the attention span, but something's better than nothing because he has to get his Quran education somewhere. So it's perfect for anybody who wants to teach their kids Quran. And you can choose if you want a strict personality, you want a playful personality. So that's the good thing about that is that you can choose somebody who's better with kids or someone who's just very, very strict. My son doesn't do well with someone who's very strict. So having somebody playful is like a good option to have. So at least they have options of how you want a teaching style for your kids. Then another thing that I signed my son up for is it's called pre-ply. And it's basically you can choose any language that you want your kids to learn. I chose Urdu because that's, you know, our native language. And so uh, he just took an interest in learning how to read it because my mom had given him some books that were in Urdu. And he knows, he understands Urdu, he knows how to speak it. He's not been speaking it as much. He speaks in English more, but he does understand everything. But I wanted him to just be able to read and write. That's like a good thing to have. So. For that purpose, I did sign up for Urdu class. I signed up, but I've not been able to actually follow through because with Arabic and his schoolwork, it's really hard for me to keep up with. So I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I did sign up for it and I missed the first class and I've not really had a chance to really do it. I think it's like $7 a week and it's like two days a week. So it's like half an hour. It's not too bad, but it's just that I'm not finding time to really be able to sit down and do it because my son just doesn't have the attention span for it. So I figured that's something I'll probably do more over the summer. That's what I have for you guys. Those are the educational websites that I recommend and the activities that I recommend. I'm going to give you guys some more uh, websites. Those are all the paid websites. I'm going to give you some more free options in my next video. I had to break it up because there are a lot of websites and I really want to give you guys the opportunity to actually go on the websites and look at if that's something that you like or you would enjoy rather than me listing 10, 15 websites. I really want you to take the time to actually go through each website and see if that's something that you would be interested in than me just listing a bunch of websites. But I'm going to give you some free options in the next video. I'm going to give you some more options on educational websites that you could be using for your kids. There are some free options and there are some paid options. But sometimes I find that you get what you paid for. So, But it's good to have some free options as well. But that's what I have for you guys for this time. If you like this video, please give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel to keep seeing more videos like this. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye.